Hello everybody, this is John Jamison again. Hope you're all doing well. It's a really nice crisp day here in Southeast Michigan and we're going to have some fun today. We're going to take it easy and we're going to talk about a real life case study. This is a real life client of ours and yes, all this chicken scratch up here. A lot of you guys have commented my writing stinks and you're right, it does stink. Uh, but you're going to get the gist. Don't concentrate on the writing, concentrate on what's up here. And this is a real life um, client of ours. I've named them Tim and Sally. Obviously their names are different, but we need to protect everybody's uh, privacy. But the numbers up here are right on. And the situation is right on. So Tim and Sally, about a 75-year-old couple from the Midwest. And we've been working with them for a little over a year. Uh, they originally uh, met me when I was doing a, a seminar. I was speaking there, and they liked what they heard. And they came to me, and it took a little while to develop that relationship, but we did. And this is what their situation was. They were both retired. They had income uh, between Social Security and pensions and required, required minimum distributions from their IRA that by now they have to start taking. About $5,000 a month. Okay, so they had a nice, nice retirement income. They also have a network marketing business. They are really into health and holistic, and they found a great company that they can get behind, and they've done really well with them, and they've actually generating about a $3,000 a month income. And as you're going to see, guys, they really don't need the money. But they love what they do, and they travel all over the country and teach people about health and wellness, and they just become a real inspiration. I tell them that when I grow up, I want to be like them. So with that, it's about another $3,000 a month. So they've got really strong, stable income. So that's one of the benefits that they have. All right Now, the assets that they had, when we started, when we first met them, they had leveraged real estate. In other words, they had real estate in different parts of the country that was highly leveraged, and really supposed to be a, break, uh, a positive cash flow, but really it was break even or negative cash flow once the expenses kicked in and they had to keep making monthly payments. So there is some equity in them, not a lot. They're hoping they're going to pay off in the future, and that's fine. Um, not a terrible investment, just probably not optimal for a 75-year-old couple. They also had about $600,000 inside of IRAs. Now those IRAs are traditional IRAs, and they are mostly in stock mutual funds. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you've got that kind of money and you're 75 years old, one of the main things you need to be talking about is protection, is you know limiting downsides. And they were able to share with me that back in 07 and 08, they lost about half of that money. It was down to about $350,000, and they were just sick to their stomachs. Now, thankfully, they held on, and the money came back. But it's basically about back up to break even, which is where it was. And now, they've still got all that downside risk. And they've experienced that big loss in the past, so I asked them, well, why do you still have most of your money inside stock mutual funds? And they told me, we didn't know anything else to do with it. And I find that all over the country when we deal with clients is that we've been taught that so much that we don't really know what else that might be available. Well, because they were working with us, we did show them some things that were available. They're excited about it, and I think you guys will be too when you see the results. They also had about $300,000 outside of an IRA. We call it non-qualified money. In other words, it's not inside of any kind of retirement plan. They also had that money in stock mutual funds. And they shared with me that that took a huge hit back when the market turned down as well. Again, came back, but you're dealing with a whole bunch of years of basically no growth inside that account and still with huge downside risk. So my question to them is, well, look, Tim and Sally, if that happens again and the market takes another 30, 40, 50, 60% dip, what does that do to your asset base? And they were just, it would, it would kill them. Now, they still have strong retirement income, assuming that that lasts. They're, they're real positive there. But I know many people don't have that kind of retirement income, and you're relying on those retirement accounts to be able to you know, keep your lifestyle funded. All right? Now, what would happen is if they lost uh, half of that money in the market and they had to start drawing out, because remember, some of this income is from what we call RMDs, required minimum distributions. So they are taking money out of that account. And if you take money out of that account at the same time it's going down dramatically, that's called reverse dollar cost averaging. If you haven't seen it, we've got a video uh, that you can watch of it. Look it up, look about, find out about dollar, reverse dollar cost averaging. Okay, so all of this money was at big risk, and they were riding that average rate of return roller coaster. Now, if you haven't been taught what the average rate of return is, we've, I'm sure we've got videos on here you can look at. Please pick up my book, The Perpetual Wealth System. We talk about average rates of return and why they're an absolute sucker's bet. Okay, so they got a big taste of what average rate of return is. They got a big taste of big market turns. And here's what their goals were. They wanted to increase their income and make it more stable. They got things they want to do, things they want to accomplish, places they want to travel. That takes money. 
They wanted to preserve their capital. They didn't want to lose anything. All right? They were very hesitant to, to be in anything that was risk heavy, and yet, where was all their money? In mutual funds. Okay? Um, they wanted lifelong income, stuff that they could set their watch by. Ladies and gentlemen, if you think about it, the people that I've known in my lifetime that had fantastic retirements, they had similar things in common. Very little to no debt. By the way, they have a free, their house is paid for, free and clear, which is nice. They have very little to no debt. Um, they have very stable income that they can count on month after month after month. And that's what they wanted. They wanted more of it. And we were able to do that, as I'm going to share with you here in a minute. They wanted to reduce their risk. They did want to keep investments. They didn't want everything to be in their guaranteed income circle. Now, guys, if you haven't seen my video on the five circles of wealth, please take some time and, and watch that. And this will kind of fold more into focus as far as the five circles of wealth and how we were able to take their really imbalanced portfolio and really switch it over to a really balanced symbiotic relationship that acts all together that's going to fill up their, their five circles of wealth. Right? One of the five circles of wealth is the investment basket, the investment circle, if you will. And they wanted to keep money inside that investment circle, but they didn't want to do it in their same old stock market mutual fund stuff. So we give them a couple other options that we're going to share with you here in a minute. Um, also, one of the things that they didn't have in place, now this is a 75-year-old couple, they don't have anything in place should either one of them need long-term care or need home health care. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that could be one of the most expensive things you do. In fact, that's one of the wealth circles is long-term care or home health care. And it's the only circle that can devour the rest of the four circles if it's not taken care of. And they didn't really know what to do. They didn't want to, you know, an insurance policy uh, for long-term care and at their age would be prohibitive. And you know what their plan was? Their plan was just to hope. And that hope could wipe out all they worked their whole lifetime for. And another goal they have is they do want to leave a chunk of money behind. They've got several children. And they want to leave a chunk of money behind for them and their grandchildren. All right? So with that, um, here's what we did. We set up a private bank for them. All right? Now, they also wanted to maintain investments. They love the idea of free and clear real estate. They have experienced leverage real estate, and they're not thrilled with that. But they're going to maintain it. There is some equity in those properties. They do about break even. And they think there's some real potential for them down the road to build equity. So that's fine. We didn't touch that. They're happy with it. But what they liked was the idea of having free and clear real estate. So it's positive income month after month after month after month. And yes, there's some expenses, and sometimes there can be some headaches. But they, gave, they turned all the headaches over to somebody else. They turned it over to a professional management company. They just get their checks. Okay, so they set up their own private bank. They borrowed money out of that private bank. They're structuring a payment back to the bank, but guess what? Since it's a private bank, they own the bank, which means all that income is going back inside a 100% tax-free environment. We can give you more details on that if you'd like later. We took a lot of their qualified money, their $600,000, and we put it inside of a private pension that we funded for them. When they did that, they immediately protected the principal. It can't go backwards anymore. They got a $60,000 bonus for transferring the money over there. They got a 10% bonus from the company that set it up for them. And they're going to wait six years because they can. They don't need to take any money out of it right now. But their plans are in six years to start drawing more money out. They plan on living the next 20, 25 years. They're really into health and wellness. And they think, hey, 75 is just a number. We're going to be around a long time. So they're going to start drawing out $70,000 a year in six years. Now, it's important for you to understand that $70,000 can it can never go away. In other words, they're going to collect $70,000 for the rest of both of their lives, regardless of how much money gets spent down. So they just set up a lifelong income stream, a lifelong pension plan, if you will, that has no downside risk, um, a $60,000 bonus, and it also does some other things we're going to talk about. We were also able to teach them some tax reduction strategies, and they were able to lower their income taxes by about $7,000. They're going to pay less in taxes next year. And they're actually going to bring in a little bit more money. But when you understand how the tax system works, you understand there's things you can do to dramatically affect how much you pay in taxes legally and ethically. So working with us, we were able to give them some tips, and they're going to take advantage of those to pay much less in income tax. All right, now, they're also using the real estate cash flow machine. That goes back to this private bank. Now, here's what they did. They bought three houses at approximately about $50,000 each. They paid cash for them. Why? Because they can. Now, each one of those is going to net them about $500 a month. The rents are more like $850 or $900. But once you take out management, taxes, insurance, maintenance, there's going to be about $500 each 
on each property. That's fifteen hundred dollars a month immediate income. That's going to increase their take home income right away. They were thrilled with that. They also have the potential with those properties to have large back end profits. These are houses that are once sold for one hundred and thirty to one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Don't know if they'll ever come back up to that. But if you're only paying fifty for them, and these were rehabbed, ready to go, all in price of fifty thousand dollars, you got a chance at really some nice back end profits. Maybe they can sell them for eighty, ninety thousand dollars. Frankly, they're worth more right now than they paid for them. They, they had built an equity of probably thirty five forty thousand dollars the day they closed on them. So a few years from now, could they sell them for a hundred thousand dollars? I think very easily they could. Nobody knows. That's the investment circle. That again, that's the speculative part of real estate investment. But ladies and gentlemen, if you're making fifteen hundred dollars a month net on each one on uh, between all three of them, yes, you'd like them to go up in value, but it's not mandatory. It's still a great cash on cash return. Plus, they're going to get some tax benefits from that real estate. We were able to set up for them what we call asset-based long-term care and home health care. So what they did is they allocated about $80,000 into a very specifically designed account that's going to give them about $250,000 worth of long-term care coverage or home health care coverage should they ever need it. Now, if they don't ever need it, you know, the traditional long-term care policy, if you pay into it, pay into it, and you never use it, you don't get the money back, just like any other insurance policies for the most part. This particular one is not an insurance policy, it's asset-based long-term care. If they don't ever need it and they pass away, that money, that $80,000 they put into the program is growing at a modest interest rate, and eventually, if they pass and don't ever use it, it'll get dispersed to their family. So they were thrilled to death to know that they've got a long-term care solution that's not just hope and pray. They're also thrilled to death to know that, hey, if I need it, it's there. If I don't, the money's going to go to my family. So guys, here's what we did with them. If you guys will go back and study the five circles of wealth, first circle is the investment basket. They chose to get out of the risky stock market. They chose to get more into free and clear cash flow real estate. They're also going to probably make some private loans um, with some other money that they have, and that's all in the investment circle. Right? Second circle is guaranteed income. Well, they've got their Social Security and a pension, which hopefully holds out for both of them. They've also set up their own private pension, that very shortly, in a few years, they're going to be able to draw out $70,000 a year out of that thing. Don't forget, they're also taking $18,000 a year out of their, their paid-for real estate. So guys, you can see, this is a pretty nice picture. This is a, a couple that has a lot of choices, and they're going to leave behind a lot of assets. All right? uh, another circle is cash or liquidity. All right? Inside of their private bank, they're leaving all kinds of, of liquid cash they can get their hands on. They also maintain a normal checking and savings account with significant resources in there that they can tap in any emergency funds they've got handled. So many people don't ever put enough money away inside of a liquid account because they're so concerned about investing, investing, investing. Well, there's a delicate balance, which is what the five circles is all about. Fourth circle of wealth is long-term care home health care. They had no circle before. Now we've set up one for them that's really going to help them should they ever need it. And not only that, tremendous peace of mind these people have with this setup. Last but not least is their legacy. Guys, this private bank they set up is based around a life insurance policy. Now, again, remember, they're 75 years old. We didn't put a life insurance policy on them because the cost is way too prohibitive. We did put the policies on their children. So when these guys eventually pass away, they're going to leave behind money, but they're also going to leave behind these insurance policies that are going to continue to grow tax-free for their children's lifetime. Most of the children are in their 40s. So imagine another 30, 40 years from now when their children are getting ready to check out Think of the generational wealth and the tax-free wealth that's inside those policies. Because not only are they setting this up, we're training their children, the next generation, to understand how private banking works, to under how understand how a properly designed life insurance contract works and all the things you can do with it. So we're not just setting these guys up in their generation. As you can see, when they came to us, they weren't doing bad. They just had a lot of things at risk, and it could have been much better. We made it much better, not only for this generation, but for generations to come. Folks, this is John Jamison. I encourage you to check us out. Check out our different websites. Go to perpetualwealthclub.com. Join us. So it's a, a program that you can join, and we're going to teach you about wealth creation, business creation, asset protection. It's less than a cheap cup of coffee a day. Please, uh, when you join, you automatically get a copy of my book called The Perpetual Wealth System. It's a number one bestseller. If you just want the book, you can buy that book at the site as well. But get involved with us. Reach out to us. We look forward to helping you and your family achieve these kind of results. Now also, tune back into some of our other case studies because this is obviously a, a quite a well-off client. We're going to show you some case studies of people that are a lot younger 
have a lot less money and they're going to achieve some fantastic results. So tune back into those. Again, this is John Jamison. I'm the author of The Perpetual Wealth System. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye now.